Randy Rothwell and praise to the Lord the Almighty. It's exactly 6.15. You're listening to BBC Radio Derby Sunday Breakfast with me, Dean Peppel. And it's time now for this week's Story Behind the Hymn with our Willington lyricist, David O'Connell. In the 18th century, if someone called you enthusiastic, it was probably meant as an insult. This was supposed to be the Age of Reason with a great big fat capital R. Life was supposed to be guided by cool, rational principles in an orderly universe. Then along come the Methodists, upsetting the apple cart and getting all fired up and emotional about their Christian faith, preaching in the open air, singing hymns set to pop tunes, and calling for people to have their lives turned upside down by Jesus. Not cool. Today we are featuring one of Charles Wesley's most popular hymns, Jesus, Lover of My Soul. There are a number of stories about how it was written. They all reflect the antagonism that the early Methodists often met with when they preached. The one I like best tells of Charles Wesley in 1740, preaching in the fields somewhere in Ireland. He's attacked by a mob, escapes. A farmer's wife hides him in her dairy. The mob comes knocking on the woman's door, and Charles climbs out the back window and hides under a hedge. While the woman pacifies the mob by inviting them in and giving them a snack, Wesley whiles away the time under the hedge by writing this hymn. The hymn is certainly charged with emotion, but in typical Methodist fashion is also strong on Christian doctrine. It's been sung to a number of melodies, but most often to the beautiful, haunting, rather melancholic tune written by Welshman Joseph Parry in 1879. Stop. 